closed timeline of war date and so forth. So, Chad? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, if you'll look at page two, uh, just a few facts about the facility projects. Supply 7 will consist of 11 facility projects which will be built in six year by the Supply 7. Uh, the total amount allocated for those 11 projects is 9780500 uh, The total breakdown is $1,630,083.33 a year or $135,840.27 a month towards uh, facility projects. Harrison, there's your ten million dollars right there. Hey, Chad, how are you? <laughs> yep. uh, staff has been able to put together a uh, priority list of what uh, what we thought was a good timeline, uh, what we thought was needed from the first to last, and then. Uh, of course, as you know, we will not start receiving any funds until March, and those will be January funds. Uh, page three uh, is the actual timeline, the projects, the project amounts, uh, the date uh, staff and I have selected uh, for the architect or engineer selection, and the award date for a contract. Uh, we'll, we're going to go through these projects in order. Start on page four. There's nothing magical about this other than uh, <coughs> experience, staff, the timeline associated with what the projects do. That's how we have to act. That's right. Uh, the first project I had, we had our, our priority list was the Lowndes County Civic Center. Uh, we had allocated $150,000, uh, proposed architect hire date uh, March 2014, uh, proposed award date August 2014, and the project includes, and on your first four line items, uh, uh, had the wrong building. It's actually building A, not building D. That's the big, that is the big main building you see from Highway 84. Uh, there's new exterior wall panels and roof panels as needed for building A. New lighting upgrade for building A, raised lettering on the exterior of building A, and new carpet for the showroom in building A. Upgrades to the bathrooms in building A, and the 4-H office. Upgrade the concession stand, new flooring in the 4-H offices, and new divider in the 4-H office meeting room, new millwork in the front office of the 4-H office, three new water fountains, new paint throughout, and new electrical covers for light switches and plugs. And we, uh, looking at these projects, this is just not something that I have been, been able to go out and look at. We've got, gotten with each uh, user of the building uh, to look at their needs, either, either the public works, the 4-H office, uh, Mr. Jake Price, uh, send us some information on the needs of that building. So what, um, yeah, what you'll be doing then is going through these after you you'll instruct the architect that you end up selecting them to go through these items and then putting a value to these items to see if we're going to be able to do what we can do with the money this time. That's correct. We we put together a we we've already estimated we'll try to do a specific <coughs> estimate or an overestimate. Uh, for these projects when we put together this plus list uh, using either myself or local estimators in town that will help us out. Yeah. So we think we will be able to complete these. That's right. Feel pretty comfortable. Yeah. That's right. Uh, the next project staff had was the neighbor boat ramp. Uh, $50,000 uh, from a proposed engineer hire date is March 2014. Proposed award date November 2014. The project includes installing a new boat ramp on the Lapaha River on the north side of Highway 84. Staff has met with the landowner and the landowner is agreeable to selling the amount of land needed to install the boat ramp, parking, and shelter. 
A driveway already exists on Highway 84. Staff has met with Georgia DOT on site, and we will not be required to do any additional work on 84 other than a uh, little guardrail for move, and that's just removing one section. Uh, staff has also been in contact with DNR. Uh, DNR will come in and locate the best location for the boat ramp. They have specialized equipment. Uh, right now they can't get on the river to do that because of the uh, stage of the river. They like for it to be below 6.0 feet. It's been at 7.0 to 8.0 for some time now. And that, uh, that will also determine our award date. Uh, this is an estimate on our award date, but the river level will also determine that. Uh, staff has also uh, got a value of opinion from a local appraiser, which the value of opinion for the land, from the landowner is 3400 to 3600 an acre. Page six. A parts and rec will purchase the land, correct? That is correct. Is that the thoughts? They'll actually, they'll, they'll have Manson of this area to be under partial rent. So all day. Okay. Uh, page six. Uh, just kind of done a preliminary drawing on Google Earth to show you what the, what it can look like in the area we are looking at. Uh, the red line is, shows a preliminary property line that's approximately a little over three acres. Uh, concerning that, and that will. That will change, of course, depending on where the boat ramp will be, and also we'll be going out this week, probably tomorrow, to look at the river to see how the uh, river levels affect in that way. Just looking at it, just from, you know, just I say from Google Earth, of course, you got to, for the picnic area, the shelter and all this is located there, you could have a good access to a nice little beach area right there for swimming on the river as well, and a good area right there for Paul. Uh, just above the bridge. Yes, sir. What do you vote? Yes, sir. That's a pretty good size sample. Yeah. Is that an original two path road that you got boxed in? That, that is. Yeah. That is Dr. Acre. Dr. Acre owns this property, and that is his driveway. And we, and, and in this project, we will fence the property line uh, because it was he has his agreement with DOT on the right of way. They fenced this property, and then we will put him in a gate that okay. is locked. Have you him a sense of security as well as access into his property rather than having to buy all the property? I mean, I that's think right. that's a, I think that's a great deal, and I, you know, it's kind of a promise fulfilled that we had when we closed off the road down there. I appreciate uh, moving forward. Uh, I'm very passionate about it. I like the designs. When it's say March, that means we're probably voting on it. Um, the architect or, or the architect already been selected. No, sir. Uh, we've got a proposed engineer hire date. There's a possibility we may do this one in house. Uh, it's depending on how much the DNR wants done. Uh, we'll, have my, we'll have to hire a surveyor for uh, to survey the land out and possibly for the boat ramp. But uh, a lot of a lot of this project can probably be done in house with under my. Do we have a good engineer on the site? Yeah. <laughs> or, or do you know one? <laughs> <laughs> and the DOT that you saw originally? Uh, no, sir. The only thing the DOT, when we met with the DOT, they, uh, the driveway is about 15 feet wide. Uh, in order to get a boat, and with a boat trailer in there, uh, we talked with them about taking uh, a 10 foot section of guardrail out, making the throat of that about 25 feet, and then it would neck down as you go into that. Well, okay. That's what I was thinking about. I'm trying to imagine pulling a boat down that, making that turn. Yeah, you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna make a boat, uh, not gonna make a turn to the boat where you're sitting right now. Yeah. Chad, is that parking you're showing on the top and up in the corner where you got a little bump out and a little square by itself? That's seven? correct. The, is that what, I, what I showed you see the little square by itself. That is a little pavilion. Preliminary pavilion. Okay. And then a little parking area right there behind it, and also. On the bottom section is a parking area for boats. And right. then you see a boat ramp proposed. Of course, that location will probably be changed. Sure, no, but that's you know, it's a great idea. Chad, like I told him, I, I talked with um, uh, Joe about a new uh, 
jump on the river is going to turn into actually a war. Yeah, so we really want to try to, I was telling them I really want to, hoping that we can have it, uh, I guess some of the citizens can possibly enjoy it. Uh, the summer, in the summer, or well, whenever, you know, as soon as possible. I just know, you know, everybody's out of school uh, during the summer time as well. Yeah. So but again, keeping in mind, the whole process right now is dependent on the BMR and when yeah. they'll be able to get the river at a six foot level, so that's going to be what they need. So if that's on the end of the summer, then that's going to just kind of extend everything on that. It'll be very difficult, to be honest with you, it's going to be very, very difficult to have a great this summer for the river. It's coming up on us pretty quick. So this is a good example of, of a, an unfortunate situation that I think is going to be a better situation when we're done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, move on to the next project, page seven. It's the Animal Shelter Innovations. We have $800,000. Uh, proposed architect hire date, March 2014. <coughs> proposed award date, November 2015. Uh, project includes a total renovation to the interior of the existing animal shelter on Gill Harbor. The renovation will include repairs to uh, walls, floors, windows, millwork, etc. New sinks, cleaning all the walls and painting them. Reconfiguration of existing holding pens to increase holding space using space saver kennels. Add ventilation to the <coughs> holding rooms. And expansion to add two new 10 pen dog kennels, new HVAC, new feed and cat litter storage room and a security side report to keep animals from escaping. Uh, Linda and I and other staff have worked on this for quite some time now, so we've got a good handle on what this project needs. And if you look on page eight, you will see some of the deterioration of the facility. And also the top left-hand corner uh, would be the expansion of the two new 10 pin dog pins on either, not on both sides, but on either or. Can we oversee this in-house? To... As far as the architect? Mm -hmm. uh, no, sure, architect needs to hire an architect for this one. Because uh, U.S. dealing with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and USDA, the ventilation guidelines, the, okay. the Fair products you use, and all, and you know, there's some expert areas out there okay. dealing with the dynamics. That weren't they were dealt with before. I think they dealt with. Okay. Yeah. Do y'all see any challenges with um, you know, housing any new animals while you're doing the re renovation or what have you? Well, we we talked about this with Linda, and you know, we would probably go in and do the expansions first as part of our programming. That way, we can move one section of animals out into the new pens, and then take that section, get it filled, painted. That way the animals aren't, uh, they don't get in there where the odors are, the, 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 the chemicals we're using. And once that's done, we can move the animals back in that section and go to another section. Uh, but we, we can't have the animals, you know, around where we're painting or we're doing any kind of chemical work, you know, cleaning the walls or repairing them. Uh, there will be some challenges, of course, because they stay full most of the time. But, but that's all part of a renovation project. That's you know, you're always going to have those type of just challenges that you've got to work with. That's right. And we'll, and we'll handle that with, during the program. Once we hire an architect on board, uh, Linda and the staff will sit down, work out the programming as far as, okay, here's what we can do, when, where, and how. I have a question. Is um, adding ventilation to the whole room, is that going to help? You walk into the lobby, you smell, and he'll knock you out. Yes, sir. Is that going to help? That's one of the biggest. Of that that other right. Not one of the biggest, but a big concern, especially coming from the county manager, mm -hmm. is when you walk in the, the main <coughs> lobby, is you know you're hit with that smell, uh -huh. and that what we want to do is separate, totally separate that mm -hmm. holding pins from the front, and so the smell separate doesn't come up. That'll be a tough affair. That's where right. everything is. If anything, you've got a negative pressure in those areas so that you don't have any positive pressure coming back from the other connected areas back in the administration. Our, our chairman might need to go down to Tennessee. No, I'm expert on all that stuff. 
it is there in the part of the world that it's almost like it's full of animals. <laughs> Uh, we'll turn to page nine. Our next project is the library renovation. Uh, it costs amount allocated is one million five hundred eighty-two thousand uh, dollars. The proposed architect hire date would be October of twenty fourteen. Proposed award date July twenty fifteen. Uh, the project includes roof repair and replacement, HVAC upgrades, IT upgrades, mold removal, computer upgrades gutters and patient, interior upgrades, and then, of course, uh, a while back, y'all voted uh, commission approved to go in with the library to apply for the grants that will also, we hope, facilitate some of the costs, making them on some of their other projects as well. Again, this is one of those projects that also these renovations will be done while the library is in operation. That's so great. It's open for so it's also going to be quite a uh, Page 10. The next project is the Naylor Community Center. $250,000. Uh, proposed architect hire date, March 2015. Proposed award date, November 2015. Uh, the project includes the construction of a new community center for the town of Naylor. Uh, the community center will be approximately 15 to 1800 heated square feet. Uh, the community center will have a meeting room, a kitchen, hands and women's restrooms, and a storage janitorial closet. Uh, and of course, the first item of business for this project will be determining the location where the community center will be constructed. On page 11, uh, of course, this is just, again, this will ch probably change, but uh, we've done a layout from CAD of what this is a 1500 square foot building showing what the community center layout could be uh, with a dining hall meeting room kitchen restrooms and storage and janitor's closet uh, me and another local estimator uh, we, we took this drawing and we estimated when we got the cost list uh, this building would be a metal building with a split face block exterior in there uh, and then of course uh, finished drywall inside and all top floors. Chad would you have to pass through from the kitchen to the uh, <coughs> sitting room? Yes sir. That would be <coughs> what we put on as an eight foot uh, countertop with a pull down with a pull down door. Chad do you think a specific location in there for no, sir. Staff has not looked at any locations uh, at this point. We haven't been directed in, as far as any to look for any. Um, you know, the only location I know of right now that we could if you want would be inside the park, you know, with this size of building in the last week. You know, that's the only spot I know of. Uh, that's the only place we currently have like that's that. correct. The finals county. So and this parks and rent. And this is going to is probably not including any sort of land back in this. It's completely the facility and the uh, fixture and parking. And, and I overestimated this uh, quite a bit. And so we should have enough money as long as the land acquisition is not. Okay. Would you predominantly want it on 84 for visibility, security, and things like that? That would be a determination. From the standpoint of the staff and the project manager, we don't care. <laughs> that is entirely a political decision. I well, they, they've got I mean, several right. options for you can, and you just have, as we know, you can try to acquire some land um, in an area where it work. Also, of course, you know, sort out of the issue, there is an existing structure that is that uh, is next to the fire station that's there now. I'm sure there can be some discussion made of whether or not you just demolish that structure and put this structure right back beside the fire station. Uh, I'm sure that's something that would take a lot of discussion to get through that process, but at least that's, those are some of the options that you have. But yeah, it's gonna have to be determined where you're gonna look at. Any 
considered to try to incorporate in that what he's talking about the old community building that's there now? Is there any way to uh, incorporate that into something new? It's not as far as we couldn't incorporate the existing building in.
it's very difficult to break the habit of the city park, county park, their parks and recreation departments. And when I say city park, I mean it's, it's located in the city. Yeah. It might not necessarily be a city. But it was my understanding, it's, it's a, I guess, a diff different agreement, or it, or it was outside the original agreement uh, authority to buy parks, something like that. Freedom Park did? Freedom Park. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding was that they may have needed it over differently, like you said, Joe, but the county needed everything they had to the authority once it was established. City may have had some reason to keep it, but it's more like a long term lease for a dollar a year or something. And I just don't know how they did it. Mathis may was held out. It, it, it was definitely held out to have a separate vote. But the authority has control of the Freedom Park, but it, it's, it's under the jurisdiction of the authority. Page 14. Page 14. Uh, the next project is the Lowndes County Fire Rescue Improvements to Drill Field and Training Facility and Improvements to Existing Fire Station. Uh, amount allocated $699,000. Proposed architect hire date is 2014. Uh, proposed award date will be on a case by case basis and completing the project a year throughout the life of the last seven. Project includes a complete build out of the existing drill field to include a drafting pit and a road. Build out of a classroom inside the existing warehouse. Repairs and upgrades to the existing fire stations that include more lounge, will be repaired and remodeled training room at HVAC and at restrooms. West side, repair and remodeled training room at HVAC and restrooms. Naylor, Repair and remodel training room at HVAC, HVAC and restrooms. East side at HVAC and south side at restrooms. I have a question about these restrooms. Will they be handicapped accessible? Or? Yes, sir. Because that's been one of the uh, <coughs> issues with the Board of Elections when they used to have voting precincts and fire stations that they have to have handicapped accessible. Yes, sir. Anytime we build a, a public building now, we have to have handicapped accessible restrooms. Or anytime we do remodel. Uh, page 15, the next project is the 911 expansion and security upgrade. <coughs> Amount allocated 799500 Proposed architect hire date January 2017. Proposed award date November 2017. Project includes the expansion of the current operations room by 75%, additional restrooms, additional offices, additional storage, additional HVAC, five new consoles for the new uh, part of the operations room, a new generator, a new UPS system, a new roof on the existing portion of the building, a new access entry system, and additional security cameras and monitors. Let me ask a question about this, Jeff. Um, with the new radio system that we've, we've got allocated in, would it be more important that we move this up before 17 and get it done before we determine exactly what we need on the radio system to make sure we've got the connections and the modules and all that together at the right time? I think when we look at the new system itself, uh, it will, I believe it will come probably before this. Well, that's why I'm asking, do we need to do this before? And Harrison says I can't do that. Uh, the dollars are working in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right, Harrison, can you run down the road? And <laughs> Our goal is we would like to be able to do the radios first and then do the expansion. Okay, well, my, my concern is if we do the, I, I mean, I understand we need to get the radios in the expansion, but connectivity, seating, layout, yada, 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 does that need to be done before the radios get here to make sure we've got all the electronics in the facility wired correctly for the new radio system? I think Chad is going to 
be working with both Motorola and the architect to make sure that's the correct answer. Okay. Even if it happens before, uh, a good answer. I don't see it. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't. But see you see what I'm getting? Yeah. I, I mean, well, I, I didn't want us to order equipment and then not have the correct connections wired through to it and things like that because uh, that stuff changed so rapidly. Even if we do the radio before, we'll make we'll make appropriate what do you call it connections or infrastructure there. So when we do do the expansion, the expansion it will be easily done. Yeah, it might even not forgot about it. Do it with That's right. Right. So that right. Yeah. But I'm, I'm with you on that. I just make sure we coordinate those two things because I don't want. That's right. Uh, Page 16, the next project is the courthouse renovation, uh, allocated $2 million. Project includes an HVAC upgrade, door window replacement, and general stabilization of existing features. Um, so regarding uh, uh, what they're going to do, I think we had uh, projected data that the judge was supposed to meet with so what they want to actually use the facility for. We, uh, I've had conversations with Judge McClain, and uh, we were, after this retreat, we were scheduled to be with this committee. Uh, I, I want to make sure everybody knows that this $2 million is not going to turn that facility into a completely That's correct. When you get into historical innovations, for instance, the, 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 the door and the replacement, taking those uh, metal frame uh, windows and doors out, and going back and putting in wood frames uh, for the doors and windows. That has to be certain historical preservation codes and requirements. That's correct. Right? So that's not going to be just my going out there with a certain fall cut building. <laughs> they can't even use Joe. <laughs> it's not going to be a DIY. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think back along the line of uh, Commissioner Marshall's question, the, uh, the enforcement board ahead of getting the court has to make the judgment plan as the chairperson to go ahead and uh, get them to begin to meet or it's trying to make a decision of what potentially that space should be used for. And of course, I can see that committee also working very close with the Chad and with the architect uh, that will be selected on the project to try to determine can we work and what will we be able to do and still utilize the building based on the budget that we have to work with. I'd be hard pressed to uh, um, do any major changes in renovation. You know what's going to go on. <coughs> They're doing basic maintenance. We don't want any leaking or different things like that. But, um, that's something we can take a hard look at before we start going about maintenance. Um, back on the public safety radio, I just want to remind everybody that the city of Dot Austin has half of this amount, four and a half million. So obviously, as you move forward on that, you might have to coordinate the timing with them. Let me, if I might, and, and you're absolutely right, that is just half of it. It's got to come from them. And of course, their revenue projections as well is going to have a huge bearing on when they think it will be available. But on the public radio system, um, we probably need to also take a look at the, at the at least the option on a large item like that of maybe doing a lease through Motorola for this system or at least the purchase type system which may spread, be able to spread that funding out a little bit and make that process a little bit easier with the city and the county. It's just something to explore. I can, I can concur. <laughs> Especially with the dates projected, I think you're almost going to have to work along those lines. That's right. Yeah. And I think the city would probably want to do that on the side. All right. Uh, 
page 17. The next project is the VOPRA soccer complex. The uh, amount allocated is $3 million. The proposed architect hire date is 2014. A proposed award date, and this would be considered phase two money, and SWA 7 uh, would be June, July 2019 or sooner. The project includes the second phase of the soccer complex and Miracle Field. Uh, the money for the first phase of the soccer complex is in SWAS 6, and phase 1 design will begin as soon as land is secured from the Georgia DOT at the North Lounge Recreational Complex. Uh, staff is currently working on a master, master plan to determine the layout of the soccer fields and how many soccer fields can be built on this property. Amount of money we have. This is right off the ramp of this way, by that business the complex of the yes. park. Yeah, yes. Like, is this park here? It's, it's actually at the, all the way at the, at the end of yeah, the street. It's really eight parts right there. That's the park. And where the old, where the where the old rest area used to be and all that behind it. The nice area. So, <clears throat> this will tie uh, this new property will tie into that side. Sliver or parcel of property directly behind the old rest area. The rest area itself will remain to the MTs. That's right there. About 60, 69, 69, some of which is wetlands, some of which is being retained. 